Welcome to the seventh edition of the And Away They Joe show. Hello, hello, Melanie. Hello. Hey, how's it going? It's all right. It's getting a little chilly now. How about over there? Chilly? Mm -hmm. It is hot in Las Vegas right now. It's probably in the hundreds right now. (laughs) Wow. Did you go for a walk or anything? Uh, No, I went for a walk earlier today and it was hot. It was hot. So it's probably in the hundreds right now. <laughs> oh, wow. I dare not to check. <laughs> it, I I wouldn't I I don't know if I could walk in the heat. So kudos for you for trying to walk in the heat and trying to stay healthy. <laughs> it's crazy. Later on in the program, we're gonna have Bob Worley. You can follow him at Bob Worley on Twitter, and you could also follow his YouTube channel, youtubecom slash slash Bob Worley. And Melanie, did you happen to see that race last night with Cafe Farrell? You know, I didn't see it live, but I saw the replay and it was the other Farrell horse that won. So that was pretty interesting. I think he was 35 to 1. 35 to 1. And Cafe Farrell was 1 to 9. And I'm sure he was 1 to 9 in every other market aside from America. So oh, if, yeah. you, if, if you sure. were on the other Farrell... On the you other gotta, day. Yeah. Big payday. 35 to 1. And then another Crazy. long shot came in. Right. And, you know, we should add that the way he spells his name, Pharaoh, is not like his sire. He spells it, actually, Pharaoh is the correct spelling, which is P-H-A-R-O-R-A-O-H. So oh. that threw me off. <laughs> what? So American Pharaoh's name has been spelt wrong this whole time? Yeah, his na- his name is spelled, Pharaoh is spelled incorrectly. So Danon Pharaoh has the correct spelling. So that's pretty interesting because for the life of me, I was trying to look up the pedigree for Danon, you know, Pharaoh. And I was like, why can't I find him? And then, you know, Pharaoh is spelled correctly. <laughs> so... Wow, that is that is uh-huh. very interesting. <laughs> I did not know that. It's but, tricky. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's crazy because that race in Japan. Well, as mm-hmm. far as I know, when I'm watching um, Tokyo City Kiba and all those other tracks that are from the NAR, which is Funabashi and Kawasaki, mm-hmm. you have to be in the front. If you're not in the front. If you're not anywhere near the front, it's going to be really, really hard for you to close. It's very rare you'll mm-hmm. see a horse close from way in the back. You have to be in the front. And that's what Den and Pharaoh did. And the other horse, I don't remember the other horse's name, but you, you Cafe mm-hmm. Pharaoh was just, he wasn't up there. So I think that's what pretty much cost him the race. Well, yeah, that's what they were saying. They were saying that the track was a heavier type of track and maybe it it didn't suit him and you know the surface was listed as muddy and with Den and Pharaoh's final time you know they suggested that it was heavier than normal so that may have been um, you know one of the reasons probably the theories of why maybe he didn't perform as they had hoped you know this is his first career lost so Oh yeah, didn't even I don't even think he placed. I don't think he was anywhere near the money. So No, he came in 7th, 7th and you know Dan and Pharaoh becomes the 8th stakes winner for American Pharaoh and his third on the dirt. So Wow. Yeah. So his so American Pharaoh's babies have been doing pretty well then, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah. And you know Cafe Pharaoh is still, you know, he still has 70 points on the mm-hmm. Kentucky uh, on the Kentucky leaderboard, um, but you know, on the road to Japan, road to the Kentucky Derby, he's won the high hyacinth. Is that what it's the stakes race? The hyacinth in February and the unicorn stakes in in June. So both, you know, was at Tokyo Race Course at a mile. So American Pharaoh secured the right of first refusal of Japan's bid to the first Saturday in September. So we'll see what the connections decide to do. The first Saturday in September. I it know. Just sounds, sounds, it, sounds kind of weird, sounds, right? just sounds weird. 
<laughs> the first Saturday in September. So, you know, Dan and Pharaoh is next in line for the bid to Louisville. So we shall see. What do, what do you think? Do you think the connections will send Kefe Pharaoh? Being that if anything, if anything, you know, between now and then mm-hmm. with, you know, the pandemic and all that, why not? Yeah, I, I mean, if you have a chance to run in the Kentucky Derby, I don't care if your horse is not good. You get to say you ran in the Kentucky Derby. So, you know, yeah, one of right? the biggest races <laughs> in the world. So, I exactly. would, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And, and with, you know, with Dan and Farrell, I, I remember his mare, Crisp. She had won the 2010 Santa Isa, Isabel and the Santa Anita Oaks. I remembered her in the Santa Anita Oaks. And she actually, and she actually placed fifth in the Kentucky Oaks um, in 2010. So that's a year Blind Luck had won. Wasn't Blind Luck one of your horses you first took a picture of? Yeah, yeah. Blind, blind Luck, well, I think she came in third in, in the Juvenile Phillies in, in the Breeders' Cup in uh, 2009 but yeah Chris was uh is the mayor of Dan and Pharaoh so and you know in the 2010 Kentucky Derby Oaks if you haven't seen that race it, it it's a really good it's a thrilling ending with um Blind Luck and Evening Jewel so huh now I got something to watch later yeah <laughs> you have to it, it's it's exciting <laughs> Here's a little interesting thing, too, when I was looking up Tokyo City Race Court or mm-hmm. Tokyo City Kiba, is they have an affiliation with Santa Anita. Oh, I don't know if it's like a sister track kind of thing, but mm-hmm. so Santa Anita runs the the Tokyo Cup. Oh, yes. Which yes. is which is mm-hmm. which is actually when Tokyo City during the summer, they run the Santa Anita Cup. Oh well, wow, cool. So they have two different. They have two affiliated races. I don't know if they have to do with each other, like bringing horses from Japan and and racing them, you know, mm-hmm. and vice versa. But a little interesting that uh, Santa Anita has a little connection with with Japan in that regard. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I've never been out to see the Tokyo Cup, so maybe one of these days, I'll I'll get out to Santa Anita. Well, I mean, when they have it, I've um. And I, I believe Bailey Gallison has been there when that happened. And they have like oh, a lot wow. of Japanese theme kind of thing. It's like a Japanese theme kind of deal where they have like food and all this other stuff. So I heard it's a really fun night oh, or a fun. really fun day of racing. And I think they have like a little market at the end of the night. I'm not quite sure. But yeah, uh, I, I would definitely check it out. Cool. I definitely will. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still laughing at Vacoma? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, but you know, hey, he's, he's gonna be a spendthrift um, stallion. So good, good for the, good for Vacoma. I, I just, I, it's just, I didn't notice it, and it was funny because I, I don't know if I mentioned in the last podcast. I don't think I did, but he, his, I couldn't tell when you're looking at him. If you're mm-hmm. if you're looking at it from the side, like when they're going down the stretch, I can't oh, yeah, tell can't that his tell. leg flails mm-hmm. about. But when you see it on the head on, you could yeah. definitely <laughs> see it. It looks like his like like a swimming motion, like what you've said before. Exactly. That's it just looks so funny. So I'm that's sure. Why I stop laughing because in my head I kept on seeing him, but he ran a brilliant race, and he always is tenacious, and and you know he he just has a heart, and but. The way his running style is 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 a little indifferent. So, <laughs> so I'm definitely going to bet him when the track is muddy because he has that weight. You know, it's water and all that stuff. He's gonna look like he's swimming in the mud. So, <laughs> definitely. I mean, I, I could be wrong. I'm not the greatest handicapper in the world, but uh-huh. it would be it would be really funny if he does win in the wet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Now we're gonna have Bob Worley talk about his career calling races in japan and a little bit about himself and you could also follow him on twitter at bob worley and his youtube channel youtube.com slash users slash bob worley melanie thank you so much hey you're, there's going to be the bluegrass stakes coming up are you going to be watching that right oh definitely yeah i haven't looked at the field yet i haven't looked at the forums but definitely we'll be checking it out 
Then you yeah, say we'll Philly be, is running? Uh, yeah, Philly is uh, running. Awesome. Swiss. Give me a second. Swiss. I should have been more prepared. Let me find it. Swiss Skydiver. There we go. I was going to say it was like something like Skywalker or Sky something. So. <laughs> <laughs> Swiss skydiver, and I believe she's the favorite too. Wow, interesting. That'll be exciting. Yeah, we'll be talking more about it next week. Definitely. All right, Melanie. Well, you have a good night, and thanks for joining me again. Yeah, no problem. Dan and Phil are right up alongside him as they go around that fourth and final corner. And down the stretch they come on the inside. Daime Coited on the outside. Dan and Farrow. Dan and Farrow has a step now on Daime Coited up. Daime Coited up trying to hold true on the inside. Unable to do so. Dan and Farrow now trying to increase its lead. A furlong and a half to go for Dan and Farrow. It's looking promising, but Daime Coited up not giving up. A furlong left to go. Half a furlong now. Dan and Farrow holding on. Pulling away now. And Dan and Farrow in for the victory. Today on the program, we have Mr. Bob Worley here. He is a Tokyo-based actor, but also calls the horse racing for Sky Racing World and for the NAR. And last night, he called the Tokyo City Kiba Race. Bob, how are you doing today? Great, Joe. Thanks for having me on the show. And good to talk to you uh, semi-in person. <laughs> what, what is it? Arash- Arashimas? Is that how you say it? <laughs> I'm not sure what you're trying to say there. <laughs> It's like welcome in, in Japanese. Ah, irashaimasen. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. Say that. Okay. yeah. I, I totally butchered that. You you <laughs> did, you did, but I thank you for trying. And you know, I mean I've I've been in I've been in Japan for eighteen years, so I don't always get it right either. So don't worry about that. <laughs> so uh, Bob, I just wanted to say thank you. I appreciate your time and I know that you moved from Japan from living in the US. Um uh, mm-hmm probably right after college or so what made you decide to move from japan what part of the states are you from well uh well those are it's a lot of a lot of information to cover there but i'm i'm originally from new york i grew up in western pa around pittsburgh so always go Steelers. and um (laughs) i i actually when i was in university i had a couple japanese friends i was studying theater and one of my friends she invited me and a couple of friends back to her hometown in in the state in uh, Japan during the winter break. So I took a month and I went to Japan and just kind of fell in love with the country. And then I decided sometime after graduation, I wanted to move to Japan just to see what it was like. And a couple of years after I graduated, I had the opportunity to move to Japan. And I was like, OK, cool. I'll go for two years. And then I just never left. Oh, so you never, well, I mean, I mean, I'm sure you've come back and visit like your family here and stuff, but it's, I do every once in a while. Yeah. But I've been in Japan. It's been mainly your life now is, is Japan is living in Japan. Oh yeah. Wow. But, um, have you followed any of the U S races at all here or, uh, have you done any of that or follow any kind of international racing at all? I mean, to, to be honest, no, I really haven't. I mean, of course, when it's the triple crown, I'll watch that. Um, but other than that, I'm just a big sports fanatic overall. And so, mm. of course, racing is is one of the sports. So any sport that's out there, I'll watch. Literally. I, I mean, I, I watch, now that I'm living in Japan, I watch badminton and, and ping pong or table tennis. So I, I, I'll watch anything. And horse racing is just, something that I've had an interest in, but I was never that laser focused on. Uh, mm-hmm. I think my family didn't really watch it growing up. So of course I didn't get into that much. Of course, yeah. Triple crown, anytime Belmont stakes, Kentucky Derby, if that was on, it would be on TV and we'd all watch it. But that was pretty much the extent of it. And I think when I was growing up in Pennsylvania, there wasn't that much of, of a racing scene in Pittsburgh. There is a little bit more <laughs> now. There's a bit more betting now. And you could also follow Bob's YouTube channel. It's uh, YouTube slash users slash Bob Worley. And I've been watching a lot of your stuff here. And I, one of the ones that I was watching was the uh, Tokyo Cribs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> and that one was actually really funny because it was like trying to be cool but awkward at the same time. And if you guys haven't seen it, you definitely should check it out. It's on. It's under his movies and stuff that I've been in playlist. So Bob, like that was like one of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, that was. Um, I belong to the an improv group, the the Pirates of Tokyo Bay, and we we put that together. Um, with some filmmakers that we enjoyed working with. And that was just a blast to make. I mean, it was pretty much all improvised, the whole thing. So we had just kind of an outline and then we're like, all right, we're just going to make a spoof of, you know, MTV Cribs. And yeah, it was totally that trying to look cool while being awkward. So it's kind of, you know, it's a true story, really. So biographical (laughs) of me always (laughs) trying to look cool, but being awkward. Oh, that brings me to the other one that I've seen, which is called Gaijin, if I'm pronouncing it right. And that's something that has to do with uh, foreigners that come to Mm -hmm. Japan. And there was another video that I saw of you doing that, too. Is that what it's really like in Japan when you're a foreigner? Um, I mean, yeah, pretty much. Um, It's, you know... You can get by on so much here, especially if you're an English speaking foreigner, because you can get by on so much just speaking English and just kind of, um, yeah, being like a a bit of an attraction in yourself just because you are a foreigner and getting away with that. You can play the Gaijin card a lot where you can like, oh, I don't know, please help me. And um, people, <laughs> people will help you. So. And I don't want to spoil it, but basically, it's an uh, American guy meets a Japanese girl, and then finds out she he speaks she speaks English, and then you know history happens from there. And right. I know you were uh, uh, you were a big actor over there in Japan, and then the horse racing came about three years ago, and it was funny because we were trying to figure out who is this guy calling the English races. <laughs> For like the longest time, and and you happen to actually comment on one of my YouTube videos, mm-hmm. and then this year I just started to you know talk to you on Twitter and watch the racing here. But amongst everybody else, like even today, we had a my co-host who does the uh, who does the show with me. Her name's Melanie. Somebody tweeted her because they tried to you know they tweeted your uh, race calling stuff, and they were like, "Yeah, we were trying to figure it out for like a whole day. Who is this guy?" <laughs> <laughs> so, so how did that, you get into the uh, horse racing well first of all i think that's it's really awesome it's kind of humbling as well that people were actually wanting to know who was calling the races i mean when i started doing the job and i was like well how should i sign on to every day should i be saying my name and my boss was like no nah, no nah, you don't have to say your name and i was like okay so i won't um but i the reason why i got this job and it's an mm-hmm. interesting story. So I have a, an actress friend, a Japanese actress friend that I've, I've worked with a lot. And she knows my boss because my boss also uh, produces films in Japan, not only doing racing stuff. And mm-hmm. he was looking for somebody who spoke English. And my friend thought he meant he was looking for a narrator just to uh, narrate the races after they had happened kind of thing. Like, okay, this is what, racing is about or something and do a narration about it in English. And I went in and met him and I found out that it was an interview to be become a horse race announcer. And, and I said, well, I haven't done that before, but I love sports and I have an interest in it. So I spent about a year uh, training myself, watching a lot of races, listening to other people calling it and just practicing mm-hmm. every day. And then we originally uh, were just doing this uh, for the market in Australia, then it went to New Zealand. Now it's in America and and Canada as well. And it just grew from there. So I I was just very lucky. It's one of those things. Sometimes you hear people in interviews are like, well, it just kind of fell into my lap and it just kind of fell into my lap and it fit for me. I, I enjoy doing it and I'm, I'm just trying to get better at it every day. We're talking to Bob Worley. You could follow him on Twitter at, Bob Worley, you could also follow his YouTube channel, youtube.com slash users dot or youtube.com slash users slash Bob Worley. And I know the big that Japan is big on racing. Have you ever gone to any of the other bigger tracks and watch a race there on your days off or anything like that? Well, before I started the job that I'm in now, I did. 
but now I'm I'm every single day I'm at I'm at the track. So I don't have a chance to go to other tracks anymore. But I used to go some of the JRA races. There's a big track up in Fuchu in Tokyo. That's the big Tokyo race track. And I just used to go because it's a beautiful track. It's a lot of fun. Uh, they have a nice, you know, inside uh, the track, there's a nice kind of grassy area. And you can kind of just sit back, drink your beers, and, and most likely lose your bets, um, <laughs> but enjoy it all the same. But now I don't have do you, the chance anymore. But I used to. Do, do you do you like sometimes when you're in the booth like sneak a bet or two in? <laughs> you know when I first started, uh, one of the the guys that was helping to train me, he would be like, "All right, well you need to bet on the horse to really understand how it works." I don't know if that was the right training or not, um, <laughs> but I, I used to do that. And then my boss, when we when we started getting into the other markets, and he he was just we started a. Uh, looking to hire you know some sub announcers and people to fill in if, in case i needed it and he said and you know there's no betting allowed i didn't know that uh, but it makes oh. sense because if i start betting on it and my horse is going to win or my horse loses then i'm i'm that's going to affect how i call the race so i i don't i say maybe my first couple of weeks I, i'd place a bet here and there just to see if i could win uh, which yeah. announcing a race does not help you win just for anybody out there <laughs> It does not work that way. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's no correlation to announcing a race and being able to win. But um, I, I don't bet on any races anymore. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that it's uh, totally no betting because, you know, over here they have a lot of – some of the track announcers here do the, uh, like, paddock analysis and all that kind of stuff. Like mm -hmm. the guy at Golden Gate Fields who's come on a bunch of times to talk about horses, he always has us – you know who who he likes and all that stuff so it's actually interesting to hear the other side where you can't bet at all you just have to call the race it's work <laughs> yeah i mean it's not like a, a written in stone kind of policy but when the boss says you know hey we don't want you to do it then i'll listen to what the boss says and i know that um you've called a lot of big big names uh from japan that has branched out and actually one of the first ones was apollo kentucky and awardee in the mm -hmm. tokyo daisho 10 and that right. was one of your first your first uh calls right that one yeah the tokyo daisho 10 was literally my first call and you know i'm i'm in a little booth by myself when we first started i mean three years ago we were at the really the bottom of the rung of the totem pole here and we had like literally a closet to work out of and I'm like in a basement closet and I got so nervous because like, this is the biggest race in, in, in our year. Yeah. And I think I did like a little, uh, what was that announcer's name from the past? Howard Cosell. Is that, is that the right name? Howard Cosell or uh, Dave Johnson is the one that does the horse racing. I just mean just general sports. I think. You know, oh, uh, Howard Cosell. Yeah. Yeah. Howard Cosell. I, yeah. So I, I, I went in, well, I, I was calling the race and I noticed like in the middle of my calling of the race that I was slightly going into a little Howard Cosell action. And I don't know why <laughs> it just started coming out the way. And, all right, and it's just, I just started going into this little Howard Cosell thing. I could hear it in my head that I was sounding like Howard Cosell. And I'm like, what are you doing? You're not Howard Cosell. <laughs> but I was so yeah. nervous. And, but I mean, it helped. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure that that was like, I, mean, I can't imagine like that was your first day doing it and they just threw you out there and then you had to call this really huge race, which, you know, if you, if you ever get to watch it, it's um, on YouTube, just type in Apollo Kentucky. It's like one of the first ones that you'll see on YouTube that Bob actually calls and you actually know the, for the first, for the first time calling, I was like, wow, this is, this guy's really good. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm happy to hear that because, um, you know, you never know. I think you know, being an actor, you never know how good you're doing. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because you can feel good about a performance, or you can feel good about something that you did. But unless people that you don't know are watching it and telling you if it, if they like it or not, you really don't know. Friends aren't always going to be honest with you, right? They're going to be like, "Hey, yeah, Bob, you're great. We love you," and then they'll turn around and shake their head. But when you yeah. when you have <laughs> And you have people that you don't know actually enjoying it. That's that's when you know, like, okay, maybe I did something right. So I appreciate that, and thank you for for plugging me that way as well. 
Well, I mean, watching last night's race with Cafe Faro and then the other Faro winning, it was actually a really good call. And, you know, it's been out there on YouTube, but the Sky Racing people tweeted out your whole, your entire call. And, and I tried to do the same thing. So it was like, after the nerves, after all that, I mean, you just start getting used to it. Oh, yeah. I mean, now I feel much more comfortable uh, calling the races. And yeah, last night's race was, was a phenomenal race. Um, I mean, everybody was looking for Cafe Ferro to win. It was kind of almost like a, you know, set in stone kind of thing that he was going to win. I mean, he was a, he was a heavy favorite here in Japan. I'm sure he was a heavy favorite everywhere else. Mm -hmm. And Dan and Ferro, who ends up winning it, was not at all on anybody's radar. Yeah. I mean, no. it basically it finished almost dead last in his last race. <laughs> I mean, wow. I mean, sure, both bo both the pharaohs have the same father, which you know, we want to talk about the father with all the different mothers. But, you know, it was the same father. But, uh, boy, I guess those genes really kicked in at the right time for Dan and Pharaoh. Did you have a yogurt after because his name is Dan? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I should have. I should have because, you know, you need the sponsorship wherever you can get it. I, I really should have done that. I didn't even think about that. Oh man, golden <laughs> opportunity lost. <laughs> well, I Joe, mean, you got, you got to tweet too. this to me before it happens, Joe. Okay, next yeah, time. Yeah, I know, and I and I tweet you during the races too, which is funny. But I mean, it's like you know, you've done commercials and all that kind of stuff too, and voiceovers. So it was like actually really interesting that from where you were as an actor to becoming mm. a horse racing commentator. So it's it's actually it's really intriguing for for people that have not followed Japan racing. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's uh, I, I, I don't think it would be the typical story of how somebody became a horse race announcer. <laughs> but I mean, it's it, it was kind of a weird career path, though. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think in a way that because I, you know, I do improv and I do regular acting, straight acting, and I think the improv really helped out because you don't know what's going to happen in a horse race and you've got to be able to think quickly on your feet. And I, you know, you mentioned that yesterday, like, how can I, how can I call a race with a horse named Poo Poo? <laughs> and um, it's fun, you know, because my bosses at my, at the track, they don't really speak English. So I can have a little bit more fun with what I say. And uh -huh, absolutely. <laughs> one of the first times I called a race with Poo Poo being in the race uh -huh. and just everybody, you know, it is spelled P U P U, but anyways, um, but first time I was in a, had Poo Poo in a race, he finished second. So Poo Poo was number two. And I made sure to say that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, wow. And I, they have a lot of uh, interesting names and, you know, and oh, it's yeah. funny because like watching, <laughs> watching a lot of you now, you have a lot of uh, different little quirks like uh in uh what is it Ka uh, kawasaki with the uh, mm. lead pony ah. the, the ladies uh waving to the camera i thought that was you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest with you i took that i say hello hello in the beginning of my podcast in honor of you oh, do you really <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was actually again that was one of those things that you know and i think the improv helped me because the ladies came on and i wasn't expecting them to be waving no other track was waving at us so i just said hello hello <laughs> and my bosses started laughing and everybody and I just enjoy saying I wish I wish the other tracks they would wave at me so I could do it more. <laughs> well, one of them, Funabashi, had the, the mask, so I'm surprised that they're not waving to the camera. Yeah, and I've <laughs> I've tried to find out I've been researching about the masks and as of yet they're not selling them. And I'm thinking again, that's you know, my not saying my not having yogurt after Dan and Farrow wins was a missed opportunity. And for them not to be selling the mask, that's another missed opportunity. <laughs> Just a couple more he uh, minutes here with uh, Bob Worley. You can follow him on Twitter at Bob Worley, and you can also follow his YouTube channel, youtube.com slash users slash Bob Worley. And I know there's some there's other uh, calls that are, are little trademark calls that you have now, like down the stretch they come. And one of my favorites is in for the victory. But last night was uh, there was one where you said when they, the horses were bumping each other, there was a little bumping and grinding going on. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just could not hold it anymore. I mean, <laughs> you called me out on that one. And I realized, you know, the second time I said it, I was like, that, this is, this is the wrong phrasing. I really shouldn't be saying bumping and grinding for a bunch of horses, but um <laughs> You know, you can't control it sometimes. These phrases come out. 
Yeah, no, that's what makes every that's what makes every unique experience with the caller. You know, there's a lot of people. I, I I'm sure I sent you the video of the guy saying mm-hmm. the '69 thing, and that was hilarious. <laughs> but a lot, <laughs> you know, and I I really think sometimes that the owners are are naming their horses just to mess with the announcers. <laughs> <laughs> there's a I, lot I'm, of them. I mean, there's a lot of crazy names. I, I mean, I've seen and I've showed you some from yeah. Japan. <laughs> so it's actually really funny. And um, for being on the track, mm-hmm. uh, if you were to tell somebody to pick a winner just by looking at them from what your experience, I don't know if you ever do that. You just look at them because I know you can't bet on it. But from based off of your experiences, you know, looking at the horses. Is there anything that you would suggest to the viewers that watch the NAR feed? If there's anything that you notice, because from what I notice is you got to be fast. You got to be up at the front because if you're from mm-hmm. like far behind, you're not going to, that horse isn't going to win. And I've, I've had to yell Baca a couple of times when that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it is, it is very rare. You don't see as many times when they come from last to first, it happens very rarely. I mean, for me, I, I don't notice as much about, the horse itself, to be honest with you, as much as it is the jockey on the horse, because there are some of the jockeys in the NRA. I mean, of course, Mr. Mataba, he's the living legend. You know, he has the, the, the most victories. He's the winningest jockey in Japan's history and he's still running. He's, he's been racing longer than I've been alive. So, oh, wow. I know <laughs> whenever I think about that, I'm just like, wow, how is he, how is he still alive? Um, and he, he gets injured every year and he's, I mean, he's he's pushing 60 and he's still recovering from falling off horses and getting trampled. I, I don't know how he does it. He's superhuman. But so there are some of the jockeys. You look at uh, Mr. Mataba, Mr. Mori, Mr. Yano, uh, Mashima and Sasagawa, those jockeys, when you when you see them, when they're going to be on a horse, that kind of tips the tables a little bit in their favor, whether the horse is looking good or not, just because of their experience oh. and how they know to run the, the the tracks so for me a lot of the times and if you if you look at japanese betting sites you'll you notice that a lot when some of those jockeys are on the reins there that they're going to be heavily favored just because of their skill rather than the horse itself also with uh the french jockey Mikhail michelle i'm sure that she mm. was running amok over there before the pandemic happened mm-hmm. yeah she so. you know she got a lot of uh, people interested in her because uh, it's a male dominated sport and the people watching it are, we'll just say as a American slang, a lot of thirsty, um, <laughs> a lot of thirsty viewers. So she was popular just because she was beautiful at first. And then she started winning races and people were like, Oh, we need to start taking her seriously. And she was a great jockey. And I wish, they, she had been allowed to stay and I hope she's able to come back because she was finding a lot of success before she left. And I think if she was able to come back, she would find a lot more success. We're starting to have a lot more, not a lot more. We have two regular female jockeys now. And oh, if we have more I, female jockeys, I think the better. I never, uh, I've, I've looked at the form and I've never noticed it. I'm going to have to double check and look at it again. And well, one this last week, thing before, yeah, go ahead. Uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, this, this week, uh, uh Ms. Uh, Kitajima, I believe her name is. She's she's out out this week, but um, she's one of the mainstays. And then there's a Miss Nakajima. So they're both they both have the kanji for island in their last name. I don't know how that worked out, but um, they're 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 two of the mainstays. But Miss Kitajima is more of a mainstay. And she's starting to find her winning ways, and she's out sick this week. So you won't see her this week, but um, keep an eye out for her definitely. Oh yeah, absolutely, and. Um... <clears throat> Well, first, before we go, I wanted to say uh, I you were right about the Mikhail Michelle thing, because when I go on YouTube and type in her name, there's some people that do videos of her that are kind of weird. But um... <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I was at the I was at the paddock before um, the tracks were, were closed to the public. And she was, um, you know, obviously riding the horse at the paddock before they go out onto the track. And she had already pulled down her her goggles and they were of course tinted goggles so you couldn't see her face that much and a lot of the guys that were standing at the paddock 
you know, they were talking to each other, of course, in Japanese, and they were just basically saying, like, oh, man, she's got her goggles down. Why does she have her goggles down? I want to see her face. <laughs> like, you're, so, oh you're supposed to be coming for the racing, man, <laughs> not, not, not for <laughs> oogling the women. No. I, yeah, and and one more thing before you go is, uh, what is I don't know how to say this. See, you, you know, I I'm sure you 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 speak Japanese. So, what would be like a cool thing to say, like as far as like trying to you know little learn a little Japanese? What's like a funny phrase to say? You don't have to say it in English. You could just say it in Japanese, and then we'll try to figure it out from there. But you could say something that that's actually you know we'll figure it out. What what is a funny phrase that you can say in Japanese? A funny phrase that I can say in Japanese regarding anything? Anything. Anything. <laughs> well, you are putting me on the spot, Joe. <laughs> I mean, a funny phrase that you can say in Japanese. Uh, this is only... For people in in Japan would actually probably understand this, <laughs> um, but let's just say I'll set the scene. So okay. you are at um, a, a fruit or a dessert buffet, and there's there's fruits, there's cakes, there's other things. So you go to the fruit section, and you would just say um, "suika kudasai," "pasmo janakte," "suika," <laughs> and oh my God. it's <laughs> it's uh, I'll, I'll explain it to you. Just to just to make it easy, so suika is the Japanese word for watermelon. Oh, suika! Okay. <laughs> suika is also a product for it's a Japan rail. They have the little IC card pass that you could just touch on uh, to the IC reader and enter the station, and it's called a suika card. Now, there's competing train companies, and they have a card called Pasmo. So if I say suika kudasai, that means watermelon, please. But it also could mean the train pass. <laughs> so I say, please give me a watermelon, not the other trains pass, but a watermelon, please. So it's a kind of a double meaning of the word suika. Oh, wow. I didn't know that they have. Well, I guess there's a lot of words here that are like that, too. But... Which the Japanese, would call, <laughs> the Japanese would call that joke in oyaji gagu, which means like an old man joke. So it, it fits for me. Oh, like a dad joke, kind of. Sort exactly, of. exactly. <laughs> well, thank you, Bob, for, for being on. I really do appreciate your time. And we're going to be watching a lot on Sky Racing World. And you could also follow the Sky Racing World Twitter at Sky Racing World. And you could also watch Bob on Sky Racing World at SkyRacingWorld.com. It was a pleasure to have you, Bob. And you're going to be calling tonight, right? I will be. I got to get ready to go to work. I got to shower and get out the door. Yeah, and not a lot of people can say that. I'm going to get ready for work. I got to go call some races. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> but hey, All right. I'll, be ma I'll be masked up. Don't worry. I'll be <laughs> masked up. All right. No bumping and grinding, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bob. Hey, guys. Joe here. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast, and I hope you enjoyed it. You can follow Melanie on Twitter at SkimTheRail. You could also follow my Twitter at and underscore away they joe you could also subscribe to the channel anchor.fm slash and underscore away they joe for more podcasts like this one thank you guys again and have a good day <laughs>